breaking a little bit of the ice, but this is serious. The guy's been to all the clubs, he's had all the girls, but he sees there's something missing, there's a void. Mm -hmm. She's been hustled and she's made a little money and she's sick of being used and abused and all this stuff and people are ready to get serious. Yeah. You know what? But there's a lot of things out there, a lot of confusion for some people. How do they find out what is, they're smart enough to know, look, that there is a creator, but how is it that there's so many different ways and which is the correct one? Talk to us. Mm. First, let's walk through the thought process of someone who comes to the right conclusions. <clears throat> they already recognize that this world was not created without a purpose. Mm -hmm. That, you know, the intricate creation of even ourselves, down to our very fingertips, is something very profound and amazing. So it couldn't be that this has been designed without, a, without a, an agenda, no a way. cause, a purpose. No way. They acknowledge that there's a creator who designed this in such perfection. Mm -hmm. And... Any decent human being, one characteristic of decency is gratitude. Mm -hmm. When somebody does you a favor, it's human decency that you want to thank them. It would be very indecent and inappropriate of you that you had a flat tire, somebody came and helped you out, and you just turned the other way and walked away, or, or drove off. That's just rude. It's just, it's not appropriate. It's, yeah. not, it's not common decency. Not at all. And human beings have a sense of common decency across religions and culture. Absolutely, yeah. So when you realize there's a creator, you realize that he's created you in such a powerful way and he's given you abilities that he hasn't given other creatures. Yeah. And he's given you, uh, you know, uh, all of these faculties, not just your physical faculties, which are amazing enough. Like none of us paid for our eyes and none of us, you know, bought our hands anywhere. They were just given to us. And there are so many others that don't have these things. So you, you, one acknowledges, first of all, that these things were given to him or her without them having to pay for them. And then on top of that, their sustenance, water, the air they breathe, the, the, the family they enjoy, the house, whatever they may have. Mm -hmm. is just, they've been poured upon from every direction with all sorts of favors, none of which they had to pay for. It was just kind of handed down to them. So the very least decent person will in some way in their mind, they want to be grateful. So even you'll find the people that aren't very religious, if they win the championship, you know, they'll say, I thank God. Yeah. Right? There's some sense of decency, right? But in, in addition, there's also a sense of appreciation. In uh -huh. addition to praise, yeah. or, uh, or rather gratitude, there's praise and appreciation. Meaning he didn't just help us, he helped us in such a profound way. And his creation and his creative power is so incredible. Just the vastness of this universe, if you ever ponder over that. Just look at the sky one day and just look at its flawless end to end. Uh, that in itself would make you in awe of the creative power of this one creator. We're not even going to name him yet. Uh -huh. We acknowledge then that this creator who made me, who has a purpose, well, who, who's the, the best person or the best individual or entity rather that can tell me my purpose? Think about this. If I made this cup, yeah. well, I made it for a purpose. The, the, the manufacturer of something manufacture something for a reason. You make a car so it drives. You build a house to live in, right? So when human beings construct something, design something, then there's a purpose in mind for which they're designed. So when you acknowledge there's a creator and he created me and he created me quite well with this profound intellect that he gave me and all these faculties and abilities, then what purpose do I have? Where am I going to find my purpose? Well, you go back to the manufacturer. You go back to the Creator mm -hmm. to find your purpose. You can't figure it out yourself, you have to ask Him. Because He's the one who designed you. So you acknowledge that you are actually, you are uh, this Lord that's over you, the one who's been providing for you and sustaining you and taking care of you, just like He's the Lord of everyone else, mm -hmm. He's the only one that can dictate your purpose. But you also come to another really powerful conclusion. That up until now in your life, maybe you're 20, 25 years old. For 25 years in your life, you didn't live up to your purpose because you didn't even know what it was, right? So you've been in violation of your purpose. Now let's take a step back. If you have, you know, if I own a computer and it doesn't do what I want it to do, right? It crashes. Mm -hmm. I can chuck it out. I can throw it away. I own it. I bought it for a purpose. It didn't fit that purpose, so I got rid of it. Back in the old days, some farmer gets a cow, right? A cow stops giving milk. He got it for the purpose of milk. It stops giving milk, what does he do? slaughters the cow. Yeah. But you come to the conclusion that you were created for a purpose. You, there's a Lord over you who expects that you live up to your purpose. But for these 25, 20, 19, 18, whatever years of your life, you've been violating that purpose because you didn't even know there was a purpose. You didn't even acknowledge it. 
But did he punish you for it? Is it, for example, one of your purposes, one, one thing under your purpose is not to lie, for example. Every time you lied, was there lightning that struck from the sky and cut your tongue off? Or every time you stole, did your hand just fall off? Or every time you, you know, engaged in something evil, something wrong, did you punish, experience the punishment right away? No, he let you go. He let it slide. He keeps letting it slide. And human beings aren't like that. You know, when we expect something from someone, like an employee, yeah. right? If, you, if I hired you to be my accountant, and I expect you to show up at 9 o'clock, and you don't show up for four weeks, and then you show up the, you know, after, at the fifth week, it's you know, 3 p.m., uh -huh. and say, Where, you know, where's my paycheck? Then you've already been fired, right? So you acknowledge you've been in violation, and this Lord of yours is far more merciful than anyone else you've ever experienced. His mercy is unimaginable. His mercy is unimaginable. But then you also realize, as unimaginable as His mercy is, if I've come to this conclusion that I don't know my purpose, or I haven't sought out my purpose, and I've been getting away with it all this time, is it okay if I should just forget about this purpose and continue to not think about this anymore and move on? But, or if, I, if I've reached, if I've come this far in my thought, then I should realize that He knows that I've come to this conclusion. He knows that I realized I should be looking for my purpose. Mm -hmm. So if I stop my search here, and say, ah, I'm thinking too deep, better go back to the life of partying, then there will be consequences. I will have to pay for everything that I did. Mm -hmm. So once this, you reach this thought process up to here, now what's the next step? You turn to this creator, this mysterious creator that you don't yet know, and you declare one thing to him. I acknowledge that you're my creator. I acknowledge that I'm supposed to be in service to you. Whatever I do in this life is supposed to live up to your purpose that you set for me, but I cannot fulfill that purpose on my own because I don't know where to start. You need guidance. I, I, don't, need, I don't have anything. So even if I want to serve you, mm -hmm. how am I going to do so unless you help me? Yeah. Unless you help me. So, so far you would mean the thought process. Gotcha. First there was appreciation. Then there was His amazing mercy that He let you slide so far. Then there was the idea that there's going to be consequence, so you better get your act together. Mm -hmm. Then there's the idea that you ask Him, you, you, I'm going to worship you, I want to turn to you, I want to give myself up to you, we need direction, but I need your help. We need direction. We need direction. So now when you ask Him for direction, you ask Him for guidance. Mm -hmm. You ask Him for the way, the clear, straight way that to go to live your life. But you also come to another conclusion. If in fact He is as merciful, if, and if, if in fact this is the truth, then you can't be the only one. This must have happened before you. There must have been people before that asked for this guidance, uh -huh. sincerely. And there must be people before that were given this guidance, yeah. right? So you ask him, instead of being left out in the, on your own, you ask him to show you a path that other people have already walked. Uh -huh. People have already got, and that he favored upon, right? And then there must be other people who asked for that path. <clears throat> now listen to this carefully. They asked for that path. They got the path. It's like me asking you for directions. You gave me directions. But I didn't follow those directions. Right? I didn't follow those directions. You, that's such a person who asks for the favor, gets the favor, and then disregards the favor, is someone who the Creator must be very angry with. You know, there's a person who didn't even get the favor. But there's a person who got the favor and then disregarded it. Uh -huh. Saw the truth and then put it aside. This person is worthy of the Lord's wrath. And then finally, there's a person who asked, who asked for the favor, got that favor, received that favor, but then mixed his own thoughts and desires into that favor. Mm. God gave him guidance, He gave him the truth, He gave him clarity, but he didn't like everything that he heard. So he put something of his own in there and became lost. Mm -hmm. Now, this thought process that I've explained to you actually, the reason I went in this route is because this is the thought process of the Qur'an, the first surah. The first surah of the Qur'an is actually the thought process of someone seeking the truth. Uh -huh. We say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, the first thing. Yeah. Praise and gratitude belong to Allah, the Lord of all the peoples of the worlds. Yeah. All the worlds, okay? So we talked about praise and gratitude. Mm -hmm. Then we say, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim the unimaginably, exceedingly merciful, constantly merciful. Uh -huh. So this was the mercy part. But then we say, Maliki Yawmiddin, the master of the day of judgment. There's going to be consequence if I, if I try to take advantage of his mercy. Yeah. Then we talked about you reaching the conclusion you want to worship him. Uh -huh. We worship only you. But we can't worship him ourselves, we, have, we need help. So we seek your help. 
We seek your help. What help specifically do we seek? Guide us. So what's the next ayah? اِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Guide us to and along the straight path. Then we said, this path must not be us alone. There are people that have gone down this road before. So we asked to find the road of those who have succeeded before us, the path of those who you favored, not those who earned your wrath, not those who went astray. Mm -hmm. right? So this thought process is what we are asking people to consider. It's universal. I didn't take you to the Qur'an first. I showed you the logic of that path first. Right? Yeah. Once you understand this path, nothing I have said is directly saying except Islam. Mm -hmm. All we're saying is be sincere to the Creator, be grateful to Him, accept Him as your Lord, ask Him to show you the path sincerely, and ask Him to show you those who walked down this path before and succeeded, and keep you away from those who walked down this path but then got lost, then went astray, or earned God's wrath, earned Allah's wrath, right? Now for people who are seeking this truth, what is the measuring stick? The first measure is your own conscience. Uh -huh. That's the first measure. The second measure is, if in fact it is from God, uh -huh. then it has to meet one primary standard. And that primary standard is, there can be no one between me and the worship of that one true God. Nobody in the middle. No, nobody in the middle. There can be those who show me that path. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to worship these people that are showing me the path. I'm only going to take their teachings to get to the path. Because they may be the ones Allah favored. Just like I asked to show me some role models, some guides. Yeah. So these are people that are role models, not ones to be worshipped, but rather to be looked at as role models, yeah. as guides. So this sincere attitude, this measuring stick, with, 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 with this standard, when you try to seek a path, and you try to filter out what is it that's out there, what are the things that are pe people are calling towards, and you find, and then in that quest, when we ask you humbly to consider, just sincerely look at Islam, yeah. sincerely look at the Quran. What is it asking you to do? What is it asking you for? What is it demanding from people? You will find it's essentially saying one thing. We created you for a purpose. Right? And Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجَنَّةِ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا يَعْبُدُونَ We didn't create gender human beings except that they should worship me. What's the